Awaken to love. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to my home. This is my new podcast, Awaken to Love. My new web video series. This is my new creative project, Awaken to Love. I've been brewing it up for a little while now, maybe a couple years since uh, the name came into my mind. And it finally was time to embark on my birthday. Yep, today's my 37th birthday. You're looking at the face of a 37-year-old. I've often been told that I look younger than I am, so if you think I look 30 or 32, I'll take it. Yeah, I feel like 37 is um, is a cool age. I like the number, actually, because it's a prime number. Um, and so that's cool. <laughs> Man, time flies. It's crazy to think of 10 years ago, I was 27. And, you know, the years just fly by. I don't feel all that different than I did. I still have the same core values in life that I did 10 years ago. Um, But, you know, an extra digit. An extra integer. One integer higher in the tens place. But yeah, I remember when I was turning 30, when I was 30, you know, I was, I was so, um, I was like, oh, I'm only 30. I'm not in my 30s yet. I'm just 30. You know, I was, I was in my 20s just yesterday. I was trying to, you know, aren't we always trying to like imagine that we're that we're younger? I don't know. Maybe some people, maybe some people are always talking about how old they're getting, but I know for me, I have a tendency to like trying to try to pretend or like act like I'm younger than I am, or I want to feel young, you know. So I'm always I'm always reaching for those those youthful compliments, um, <laughs> aren't we all? Anyway, the point is, it's good to be alive, and I decided to use my birthday magic to uh, do my introductory podcast episode. It's just me today. Um, As we go along, I'm going to have guests on the podcast. You know, we'll be having interviews and conversations and jam sessions right here in this room. Uh, maybe we'll do it in other locations too. You know, we will see. But as for now, I'm, I'm warming up the space. I'm heating up the pan, as it were, so that we could start simmering some, some ideas, you know. Uh, I really began to be drawn to this whole podcast notion uh, just because of, you know, some of these very popular podcasts that are out today that are conversation-based. Um, I think that it's cool. It's like we open a portal, you know, by putting up the recording equipment and the cameras and do the lighting. And, you know, when we make a point to sit down and talk to each other and we create this intentional space we come up with ideas and thought patterns that maybe we wouldn't have thought of before. And it's also just a good uh, opportunity to connect with people that I'm interested in, you know, to grow the network, if you will. Um, and yeah, I've been, ins- I've been inspired by a lot of the podcasts that are out today. Joe Rogan, of course, you know, um, love it or or hate it, you know. Some people don't like him because he's a meathead, and I definitely felt that way when I first was introduced to Joe Rogan years ago. Uh, he would talk about vegans and make fun of them, and 
you know, he would always talk in such a way that he just sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He knows the real deal. And that used to bother me so much. Somehow I began to get a liking for Joe Rogan and as a character and his uh, place in the world. Um, and I started giving him more of a chance, you know, when he would get some, some guests on the podcast that are, uh, that are, you know, idols of mine, if you will, um, people that I'm a fan of and that I respect their work, I would see them on the, on his podcast and give it a chance. And, you know, I started to realize that, uh, he's just a guy that is doing his best and he actually really is doing a great job with his podcast work. Um, cause it's just high quality and it's really authentic and you can tell when you're listening to these conversations that, it's not scripted. It's just people talking about what's on their minds. And so that's what I wanted to get into as well. There's a few other podcasters that have been in very inspiring and influential, maybe even more so than Joe Rogan. I'll talk about them later, but you might have noticed this contraption that I'm holding. This is my Chapman stick, of course. I'll play it for you a bit. Chapman stick. Yes. I usually try to avoid talking about the Chapman stick when I'm in my performance mode and people want to ask me about the instrument. I kind of tend to avoid it. Um, I don't know why I've developed this tendency. It's probably because I want people to focus on the music more so than the object that I am using to create the music. Regardless, today's my birthday, so I'll talk about the Chapman Stick for you here on this podcast. The Chapman Stick, of course, was invented by Emmett Chapman, a man of Los Angeles, California, in 1969. The Chapman stick is a completely American invention. Has nothing to do with the sitar or dulcimer or any other instrument that might have came from a different culture. The Chapman stick, I think, is uniquely American. And it's rare to find an instrument that is truly an American design. Um, it's a modern invention and it's a combination of a guitar and a bass. But the special thing about the Chapman stick is that it's played by two handed tapping. So as you can see, instead of strumming with one hand and picking each hand can play notes independently. There's lots of information about the Chapman stick on the internet. 
so I'm not going to keep describing about the instrument for much longer, but I will say that the instrument really has played a part in my life that I knew I never knew uh, how much of a place in my life that it would hold. Um, I feel honored to say that I was able to meet Emmett Chapman, the inventor of the Chapman stick, uh, before he passed away a couple years ago. <clears throat> I met him over 10 years ago now, and it's really cool just to think that this brand new modern invention, that I was actually able to meet the inventor of the instrument that I play, uh, and that plays such a, a central role in my life. Emmett Chapman was always really cool to me, very supportive of my music, and uh, he was a sharp, a sharp guy, had a sharp mind, you know, always had very insightful uh, critiques anytime that he would give any kind of reflection or impression on my music if I shared it. He would always have something good to say. Um, so, yeah, like I said, an honor to have met that guy. I want to show you around my house. All right, so we're here in the living room. Multiple camera angles set up so that you can see my pretty face. There's the laptop we're recording on. Uh, I've been in this house for over 15 years now, living in between my travels. It's amazing to think that I've been here this year, this long. I've been doing an Airbnb listing at my house so that when I'm traveling and when I'm not in town, I let travelers stay in my house. This door goes all the way to the backyard. We're going to step outside a little later, but I'll continue around the house and show you around. I like to keep my tea cover TV covered. going to show you the music room in the back. This is where I sleep. Here's the bathroom. Some delightful tile work was done by my friend Noah Proudfoot. Here's where the magic happens. This is the studio room. It's not as picturesque as it perhaps could be, but you know, there's a lot of love that has swirled around in this space. All right, back to the living room. Dining area, toaster oven, ain't got no microwave in this house. Very modest kitchen, but anybody who ever comes to visit learns real quick that Flint loves to feed people. <laughs> All right, through the hurricane proof door. You gotta have one of those in Florida. It's my CRV, that's where I be rolling around the country all the time. Front yard, we got some aloe growing right here. It's flowering, isn't that cool? Got some pineapples growing over here. Got a frangipani, AKA plumeria tree. Over there we got multiple coconut trees sprouting up. Here we got a mural that was painted by Trinity Wave during the pandemic. Got some great neighbors next door. Oftentimes I hear the lady next door singing her heart out. So let's keep going. This is another coconut tree. These are ginger plants. Gotta have central AC. If you live in Florida, it's getting hot even though it's only springtime. Got some banana plants here. And yet another coconut tree. 
Yeah, that's a coconut. Ooh, two coconuts are growing in there now. This is my little garden patch. Looks a little sad right now. I think it's starting to get too hot for things. I'm gonna try planting a garden right underneath the shade of the coconut tree for the summer. Look at all these beautiful coconuts. Oh, what a blessing it is to have coconuts growing in my backyard. I love coconuts. This is where I'd be composting. Put all my food scraps and things like that in here and I cover it up with grass clippings whenever I mow the lawn. And it keeps this coconut tree real happy. So I thought maybe for the summer, when it's getting too hot, maybe some plants would enjoy the shade of the coconut and the compost soil. Here is an orange tree. This baby just gave us fruit for the first time this year. It was a bit tart, but it was delicious. Here is a uh, saw palmetto or some kind of sable palm, some kind of palmetto tree. I remember when this thing first sprouted up, it was just a little bitty baby. Little bitty baby palmetto, just like this one over here. And I let it grow, and lo and behold, now it's a thick trunk. Amazing. Yeah. So this is the beautiful paradise that I call home here in Fort Pierce, Florida. This is a Brazilian pepper tree. Technically it's invasive. I've tried to remove it a few times and it keeps on coming back. So, a strong will. This is a key lime tree. I've got many, many key limes off of it, but it has not fruited recently. It's another little native uh, palmetto thing that popped up. I just love to let the native flora just flourish. This is my avocado tree, and it's, uh, it's a Florida avocado, so the avocados are pretty big, unlike the Haas avocados, which are smaller and known to be a bit more creamy um, than the Florida ones. However, this beautiful avocado tree has delivered so many beautiful, delicious avocados, and I thought it was gonna be fruiting thought maybe these little buds might be about to be fruiting, but I don't know. I've, I'm not as green-thumbed as I would love to be. Here's my lychee tree. Uh, the lychee is certainly fruiting. You can see little baby, tiny little green balls. These are all going to be lychees. Oh, I love le lychee free fruit. Lychee fruit! I love it! Yeah, so this whole area of the yard is like, well, it's getting a little overgrown right now, but it's always been like a really magical zone in the shade between all these trees. Yeah, it's time to, it's time to clean it up a bit back here. I'm not ashamed. You know, I've been traveling a lot. It always uh, gives me inspiration to come home and give some fresh love to the place I live. This is all kava. These things growing right here. Yeah, kava plant. If anybody knows about kava, then you know that you can drink the root juice, as they do here in Florida. We have many kava bars. Um, it's a, perhaps an, an alternative to alcohol. Um, mellowing type of drink from the islands. Well, I've got kava growing in my backyard. And that's a beautiful oak tree. Here is yet another coconut palm with some more babies at the bottom. Looks like I got some nuts that I can be harvesting about this time. Ooh, yum, I love coconuts. All right, let's continue. That's the back door that we poked our heads out of for just a second earlier from the guest room. Oh, leftover bucket from my old roommates. Been meaning to throw that out for them. And now we're back in the front yard. So. As you can see, there's much to be grateful for. I always go through the kitchen door I think a lot of people do in this neighborhood. Kitchen door is kind of the place to uh, 
to be walking in and out of. All right. Quiet on the set. Here we are. Back, back behind the cameras. So that's my house. Hope you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and play another song for you. This is a song that was written by Max Ribner. He's a beautiful soul, beautiful musical channel. I love Max's music and this song has really touched me. It's called Thank You For This Day. Thank you for this day Thank you for this moment Thank you for the gifts you bring They inspire me to sing Inspire me to sing Thank you for this day Part of the intention of this podcast is to leave it really wide open to all kinds of ideas to flow. Uh, this is kind of the new iteration of my podcast. I have 13 episodes out of a podcast called Being a Musician. Some of you might remember that one. Uh, the whole deal with that was it was... Um, I had musical guests, and every guest was a musician, and so we would talk about musical life. So after 13, 14 episodes, um, I thought, you know, it would be cool to open it up to a more broad format, and I wanted to be able to bring guests who maybe are artists, other types of creative professionals, people who might be musically inclined, but maybe maybe not. Maybe people who aren't music musicians at all. I wanted to be able to bring other types of people on the show. And I figured even if I have a non-musical guest, I can still bring my own music into the podcast if I like to. And so yeah, I thought it would be a great way to like bring other types of creative video footage, um, you know, other, more, more creative content. I, I want to put as much into this show as I can to make it a beautiful, flourishing experience for the audience to enjoy. And I think about the word podcast, even though I'm calling it a podcast, uh, I feel like this word podcast has become popular when some of these podcasts are, they're just shows. You know, does it even have to be a podcast? What does podcast even mean? The word itself, as far as I know, came from the iPod back in the 2000s, early 2000s when the iPod came out. 
suddenly we had podcasts and the idea was for to have audio radio shows that you could download and put it onto your iPad, iPod instead of having to listen to the radio now people can broadcast and distribute their own internet radio shows um, as like downloadable episodic content and over time streaming became you know more popular than downloading it has pretty much eclipsed the idea of downloading music or videos everybody's streaming and so all the podcasts as well are now streaming and you might not be listening to a podcast on an iPod anymore in fact it's probably super rare that anyone is using an iPod at at all uh, but still the word podcast has persisted um so anyway yeah it's a podcast as we currently know it it's also a web video show it's a creative endeavor awaken to love here we are and i want to thank you again for tuning in if you've made it this far thanks for listening thanks for watching i've got all these cameras pointed at me so that you can see me from multiple angles what is all this for it's it's for ideas to flow um, in this world, you know, with the internet, we have distribution of information like never before. All of us have the access to put our, put our ideas out in ways that we never could have reached so many millions of people without, uh, corporations, you know, and individuals and CEOs gatekeeping. And there's still, um, a little bit of that going on with the internet now, there's a certain amount of gatekeeping, you know, the algorithm, whatever that is, you know, everybody thinks that the algorithm is in control of who gets to see what, and there's probably some truth to that, but I think that people talk about the algorithm when they really don't know the truth of how it even works. Everybody just loves to talk about the algorithm because it seems like the smart thing to talk about, and you maybe you want to get some kind of grip on, like, how reality works, so we kind of just blame the algorithm on everything. Whatever. Uh, you know, algorithm or no algorithm, this is Awaken to Love, and on this show, I want to be able to talk about anything. I want to have these conversations with my guests where nothing is off the table. We can talk about conspiracy theories, whatever. We can talk about cool ideas. We can, we can talk about Florida and what's beautiful about Florida. I feel like Florida is kind of unsung in its beauty. You know, in the mainstream, people love to talk about Florida as like a joke. We talk about Florida Man. We talk about the strip malls because there's so many strip malls in Florida. People love to rag on Florida, and I am in love with this place I call home. There's so much beauty here in Florida. There's over a thousand freshwater springs in Florida, and we're talking about like springs that you can swim in. The amount of spring water that flows out of the ground in Florida is incredible. And places like these are sacred to me. The beach, the ocean, of course, is sacred. We have so much ocean, so much beach in Florida. The point is, I love where I live. I love this place, and I wanna, I wanna open up, you know, more, more love for this place. And part of the the whole idea with the podcast, Awaken to Love, is to keep the topic always directed back to that as the north star, as the home base, the center, love. Uh, even though I want to be able to talk about wide-ranging topics, unlimited potential for different topics. I want to remember the the premise and the purpose of the show, Awaken to Love, so that, you know, whatever it is that we are talking about, maybe we get worked up, maybe we get some passion, maybe we, uh, maybe we got some heat, some some anger even about the state of the world, but this space is about bringing it all back to love. I'm going to go ahead and sing another song for you.
All right. It's a new song. This is going to be debuted at tonight's show. I'm playing a show for my birthday with my full band, the Flint Blade Band, tonight in Vero Beach. You'll probably see some footage from that throughout the episode by the time I get around to editing it. So here's a brand new song we're going to debut tonight with the full band. It's called Lightning in Our Blood. Much love, y'all. Another podcast I enjoy is the Duncan Trussell Family Hour. Uh, that one's audio only, so points off. I love when there's a video aspect, but Duncan is doing a great job. I love the creative aspect of his podcast, how he'll, in, he'll include songs Sometimes he'll include some of his own songs that he've created, even though he's like an amateur, you know, musician and he's outspoken about that. I think it's cool that he'll create his own music and put it on his own podcast. So I thought, well, you know, I should do something like that and I'll, I'll take a step further, bring some video aspects. Um, I've also been appreciating uh, what Tom Green has been doing. Lately, uh, the wacky comedian guy that we all grew up with, um, I never really thought about much him, but his n new podcast is really cool. He does it out of his barn and out of his like woodland forest home in Canada. He takes us around his land and shows, shows us his mules. He goes on rides on his mule and takes the cameras and just shows around the forest and shows us like chopping wood and stoking the the uh the wood fire uh stove in his living room. So um seeing stuff like that, that's where it really clicks. It's like, you know, it's it's more than a podcast these days. You know, you can create a show and it can be anything you want. 
And I wanted to bring more of these open-ended ideas into the podcast. So thanks for checking it out. I'm going to sign off now. I've got a big day ahead of me. I'm going to play a show with my band tonight for my birthday. Really excited. Hope to see some friends out. And, you know, just extending gratitude. Sending the message of gratitude for this life. Let's make the best of it. Let's lift each other up in this world. Let's share love.